Welcome. All right. So in this case, there's you know there's a couple different ways we could go about this, um, and really kind of depends on what what way you really you know like to first. And a lot of times, anytime when we're looking into factoring, you know, or solving, we always want to look into setting um, using the most simplest form of our equation. Now to solve this, we want to set our our y um, our output values equal to zero because we want to find the solutions for x that make this equation true when it's equal to zero. So now the next thing that we um, need to do, if I look at this, I can see out of these two terms, they share a 2. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually, I'm going to do this two different ways actually for you guys. The first way is I can factor out a 2. And if I factor out a 2, I'm left with an x squared minus 50. All right. Now then I can apply the 0, pro I'm sorry, x squared minus 25. Now I have the product. Right of two terms equal to 0, so I can use the 0 product property. Um, that doesn't really make sense, so let me go and explain it a different way. Now that I've factored out the 2, I can actually divide both sides by 2. Right, That's an operation. Well, 0 divided by 2 is just going to give us 0. And the reason why I was trying to go through this is because I wanted you to, to represent that uh, we would understand that by dividing out that 2 or factoring out that 2, you're not changing the answer. And I'll show you why you're not changing the answer. Let's just go through the problem without factoring out the 2. What I'd do here is I'd add a 50 over here. And I'd have 50 equals 2x squared. Then I'd divide by 2. And I have 25 equals x squared. Well, here, I can solve this either by the square root method or by difference of two squares. But let's do it by the square root method. And by doing it by the square root method, you see that I have the x squared. So a lot of students are very hesitant by factoring out numbers. And they always want to set it equal to 0, say it's a solution. But if you just divide it out, when you're factoring out, all that's doing is just you know, it's a replicant of your equation. It's not going to affect the solution. Because now I can introduce the square root on both sides. Doesn't matter which one I'm going to solve. And when I introduce the square root of both sides, I need to make sure I include the positive and the negative of the square root of my radicand. And therefore, in this example, the square root of 25 is going to be plus or minus 5. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you solve a quadratic by applying the square root method. Um, by applying the square root method when you have to factor out a term. Thanks.